Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer accusing FBI Director Christopher Wray of defying a congressional subpoena. Comer now threatening to hold him in contempt of Congress if he refuses to turn over a single unclassified document, which could tie then-Vice President Joe Biden to a bribery scheme. Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley also saying this, quote, the FBI knows exactly what document Chairman Comer and I are seeking. And if they know us at all, they know we will get it one way or another. Joining me now is Ohio Congressman, Chairman of the House Judiciary Committee and Chairman of the Subcommittee on Weaponization of the Federal Government, Jim Jordan. Congressman, it's good to see you this morning. Welcome. Good to be with you, Mary. Good, good to be with you. So much to talk to you about. But first, let me, let me begin there on this document that your yeah. colleagues are seeking over an oversight. Uh, what are you going to do if you don't get it? How are you going to prove this? Well, I think the, the fundamental question is just give us the darn document, yeah. for goodness sake. It's not classified. It's, it's, a, it's a piece of paper, maybe a few pieces of paper. Give us the document. Senator Grassley has a whistleblower that he deems credible who came to him and said this document exists. Let us have the document. And if you don't, Chairman Comer's indicated we'll do whatever we can to pressure them to give us that information. I, I'm so tired of the, of the unelected folks thinking they run the uh, government versus those people who are actually accountable to the American citizen, to we the people, to the voters. That's not how it's supposed to work in yeah. our constitutional system. So give us the darn information. Well, well, you've spoken to a lot of whistleblowers at this point. I want to get your take on, on, on what they're telling you, because FBI whistleblower Garrett O'Boyle joined me on this program this week yeah. to discuss the weaponization of this agency. Here's what he told me. Watch. It certainly appears that it's a two-tiered system, and it's it's in favor of one uh, political leaning over the other. That rot, it, it is at the headquarters level. It is at the top. I would estimate probably 20 percent of the agency, the senior executive staff level. And honestly, it's probably not even all of them, just a lion's share of them who have really distorted and twisted the agency. Congressman, this has all been so disturbing. I, I yeah. know you know this better than anybody. It started with the Russia collusion uh, lie right. uh, that the FBI pursued, even though they had uh, zero evidence. We learned that kind of, uh, over and over again, most recently with the Durham report. Yeah. How do you change this culture without taking the head off? That is Christopher Wray. Well, you, you first of all uh, go after the appropriations process. I mean, that, that's where we ultimately have the authority is, is, the, is the power of the purse. And, and we tell them, you're not going to get money for certain things. You can't use money for certain things. We're going to restrict the amount, the overall amount. We may cut how much money goes there. We have to look at all those factors. That is the ultimate power that you have. And here's a big one coming up, Maria. We should not reauthorize the 702 part of the FISA program. Okay. We should not. This is the story last week where hundreds of thousands thousands of Americans were illegally searched. You, this database was illegally, the queries they did to it was illegally done simply for Americans who were out there exercising their First Amendment liberties. So that is, that is a key thing that is up for reauthorization at the end of this calendar year. We should not reauthorize that in its current form in any way. Okay. That is a huge win we could have for the American people. And, and, and when you're talking about pulling back funding or holding funding back at the FBI, what, how significant would that be? How much or what percentage well, can you give us that well, you would no, like no, to hold back? The, here's an easy one. They want a new facility that's going to cost hundreds of millions of dollars. No way. No way should we sign off on that. So there's one easy one right off the bat. Then we should say no funds in this, in this appropriation can be used in any way to retaliate against whistleblowers. We, mm. should, we should put other restrictions on the. If you're doing any type of encouraging big tech to censorship, you can't use taxpayer money for that. So we should put all kinds of what we call riders, language that limits how they can spend American tax dollars. That should be part of this process, too. We are currently working on that language. We think it's real important to get them in those appropriation bills. Yeah, I think you, you raise a really important point in terms of working with Twitter. We know that there were a thousand people in government uh, who had the job of amplifying lies and suppressing truth, uh, directing Twitter to shut down accounts. We know this thanks to Elon Musk. And now the House Judiciary yep. Committee obtained that document, which reveals the IRS opened an examination into journalist Matt Taibbi and his 2018 yep. tax returns. And they opened this investigation on Christmas Eve of last year. Yeah. Taibbi says oh. that's the same day he published the report on Twitter working with government agencies. Taibbi said that the IRS even checked to see if he had a hunting and fishing license or one yeah. uh, for co a concealed weapon, Congressman. What is going on? This is corruption in plain sight. 
You, the, your friendly IRS checking to see if you got a hunting license, a fishing license, if you're registered to vote, if you have a concealed carry permit. That is frightening. They opened this investigation, as you pointed out, on Saturday, Christmas Eve, December of 2022. They open it. And then, of course, the kicker is they knock on his door. The agent comes to his door after first searching his back, doing all wow. this background search on him, knocks on his door at the very moment he is testifying in front of Congress about how big government and big tech had worked to censor American speech. If that isn't frightening, I don't know what is. Now, maybe the FBI is going to come forward and tell us, oh, it's just one big coincidence. Okay, but I kind of doubt it. And everyone I've talked to about that fact pattern says, there is no way this was chance. This had to be deliberate. They were intentionally targeting the guy who Elon Musk picked to do the Twitter files and give us all kinds of valuable information. Yeah, I've got two more issues for you. The Republican lawmakers are slamming senior FBI official Jill Murphy after she told Texas Congressman August Pfluger she had not read the Durham report. Really? Former Trump campaign aide George Papadopoulos reacted to the report. He's calling out the FBI's, quote, predetermined plan to sabotage the Trump campaign, Congressman. We know all about this. Uh, among the first people to actually call this story out back in 2016 and 2017 for what yeah. it was, a lie made up by Hillary Clinton's camp. What can you do about it? Well, we're, 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 go we're going to continue to investigate the FBI. We're going to do what we talked about when it comes to the funds. But, I, I mean, I, I guess we probably shouldn't be all that surprised that the person testifying said, I haven't read the report because they didn't want to read about all the things they did wrong. Wow. I mean, Mr. Durham pointed out no probable cause, no predicate, no evidence whatsoever yeah. they, when they launched this thing. And then the, the, the key line in his report is the FBI failed in its fundamental mission of, it, of fidelity to the law. That's right. They didn't follow the law, for goodness sakes. And they're the top law enforcement agency in the country. Unbelievable. That is really scary and why we have to continue our work. And they totally ignored the claims that Hillary Clinton was uh, influence peddling, did nothing about Hillary Clinton uh, and uh, pursued Trump a a as a as they did throughout not just the campaign but as he was a sitting president. But I want to get your take on something even worse. Earlier in the program, I spoke with Media Research Center President Brent Bozell. He says his yeah. group obtained documents that show the Department of Homeland Security is using a program meant to fight terrorists, and they're likening groups like the Heritage Foundation, MAGA, Fox News, the RNC. They're comparing all of those to Nazis, Congressman. Yeah, this is, this is really scary, too, but this is consistent, frankly, with what President Biden said last fall when he stood in front of Independence Hall with that eerie background that he had and gave that ridiculous speech where he called half the country fascist. This is this is now this this pattern, this mindset that I think exists in way too many of the top people in these federal agencies. Remember, this is the same agency, the Department of Homeland Security, who tried to set up the Disinformation Governance Board. This is the same government where the Richmond Field Office of the FBI said, if you're a pro-life Catholic, they view you as extremists. I mean, this is how ridiculous it's gotten, and again, it's why under Speaker McCarthy and House Republicans with the majority now, why our work on exposing how these agencies have been turned against the American people, against the very taxpayers they're supposed to serve, why our work is so darn important, and why we have to, again, use the appropriation process to limit how these funds are spent, the American tax dollars are spent, and make sure we don't reauthorize FISA in its current form. Congressman, we would not know any of this stuff if, if the Republicans were not in charge. Thank you for your work. We'll be watching. Thank you, Congressman. Thank